characteristics of the two mindsets. This table really illustrates the contrast between the two. The first big characteristic we need to talk about is belief. Again, people with this fixed mindset believe that skills are born and therefore they can't or don't have to learn. People with a growth mindset believe that skills are built, therefore they can learn. The second major characteristic is focus. People in a fixed mindset tend to focus on performance and outcomes and results. In other words, their main focus, their main concern becomes how they look, and more specifically, to not look bad. People with a growth mindset tend to focus more on the process of getting better, of learning and growing. These mindsets and these characteristics have a huge influence on our ability to learn. And now we start to see why. Let's look at like the four key ingredients to growth. Effort, challenges, mistakes, and feedback. The research shows that when somebody is in a fixed mindset, they look at effort as a negative thing, as something that you do when you're not good enough. They also don't see the value or purpose of putting in effort. They've been shown to back down and avoid challenging situations. They get really discouraged and worked up when they make mistakes. And when somebody with a fixed mindset receives feedback from a parent, a teacher, a coach, or a friend, they get defensive, they take it personally, and they don't see the value or purpose of the feedback. So in other words, people with this fixed mindset actually avoid and shy away from these four key ingredients to growth. Dweck and her team have shown that when people enter a growth mindset, they look at effort as a useful thing, as an important part of the learning process. They're actually more likely to embrace challenges and persevere and work through them. They see mistakes as learning opportunities, and when they receive feedback, they actually appreciate it and use it. Now the fascinating and important part of this table is to connect the dots between these key characteristics of the two mindsets and our actions and behaviors towards learning. Let's look at the fixed mindset side first. They actually shy away from putting in effort because they don't believe that they can change. They give up when they're met with a challenge and things get hard because they don't want to look bad. So in their mind, the challenge becomes a threat and because they don't believe that they can change. They hate making mistakes and are discouraged by mistakes because if you're making mistakes, you're not looking good. And they don't see the value or purpose of feedback because they don't believe in their capacity to grow. So in one way or the other, every single one of these actions is a byproduct of these characteristics. And the same is true on the growth mindset side. They see the value and purpose of effort because they believe in their capacity to grow. They're more likely to take on a challenge and persevere through it because they believe that they can grow and because they're focused on the opportunity to do that. So they frame a challenge as an opportunity to get better. And by focusing on the process and believing in their capacity to grow, they're more likely to understand how important mistakes are in this process. And when they receive feedback from a parent, teacher, coach, or friend, they're more receptive to this because their focus is on getting better and because they believe that that information can help them grow and they have the capacity. Neuroscientists support the idea they confirm that the brain grows like any other muscle in the body, with training. Studies show that adopted twins tend to have higher intelligence compared to their siblings who stayed with their biological parents. The difference appears to come from the higher educational levels of adoptive parents and shows that nurture is more important than nature. A simple switch in how a person views a situation can mean the world of difference not just the outcome of that situation, the outcome of that person's place in life. As the late poet Samuel Beckett once said, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. What do you think about the concept? Is it overly simplistic? And if you buy the idea, do you believe it is possible to make a permanent switch from a fixed to a growth mindset? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. It was grit. Grit is passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. Grit is having stamina. Grit is sticking with your future. Day in, day out, not just for the week, 
not just for the month, but for years, and working really hard to make that future a reality. Grit is living life like it's a marathon, not a sprint. A few years ago, I started studying grit in the Chicago public schools. I asked thousands of high school juniors to take grit questionnaires, and then waited around more than a year to see who would graduate. Turns out that grittier kids were significantly more likely to graduate, even when I matched them on every characteristic I could measure: things like family income, standardized achievement test scores, even how safe kids felt when they were at school. So it's not just at West Point or the National Spelling Bee that grit matters; it's also in school, especially for kids at risk for dropping out. To me, the most shocking thing about grit is how little we know, how little science knows about building it. Every day, parents and teachers ask me, "How do I build grit in kids? What do I do to teach kids a solid work ethic? How do I keep them motivated for the long run?" The honest answer is, I don't know. <laughs> What I do know is that talent doesn't make you gritty. Our data show very clearly that there are many talented individuals who simply do not follow through on their commitments. In fact, in our data, grit is usually unrelated, or even inversely related, to measures of talent. So far, the best idea I've heard about building grit in kids. Is something called growth mindset. This is an idea developed at Stanford University by Carol Dweck, and it is the belief that the ability to learn is not fixed; that it can change with your effort. Dr. Dweck has shown that when kids read and learn about the brain and how it changes and grows in response to challenge, they're much more likely to persevere when they fail, because. They don't believe that failure is a permanent condition. So, growth mindset is a great idea for building grit, but we need more, and that's where I'm going to end my remarks because that's where we are. That's the work that stands before us. We need to take our best ideas, our strongest intuitions, and we need to test them. We need to measure whether we've been successful, and we have to be willing to fail, to be wrong. To start over again with lessons learned. In other words, we need to be gritty about getting our kids grittier. Thank you. The key to success. It's not simply effort or focus or resilience, but it is the growth mindset that creates them. The mindset itself is critical. Research shows that when we directly try to build grit or persistence, it is not nearly as effective as addressing the mindset that underlies them. How many of us think of ourselves as not math people, or creative, or sociable, or athletic, or conversely, that we're naturals? If we're to fulfill our potential. We have to start thinking differently. We have to realize that our, we're not chained to our current capabilities. Neuroscience shows that the brain is very malleable, and we can change our own ability to think and to perform. In fact, many of the most accomplished people of our era 